Okay, let's boogie. Full tank of gas. Rule number one of doing stuff out in the desert, never let your gas tank get below half empty. Today, we're going up to the Mojave Desert to fly Phineas. Phineas is a two kilogram rocket flying on an Aerotech I-205 rocket motor up to 850 meters. The goal of this flight is to test active roll control using movable fin surfaces. We're here, we made it. We're out at the very edge of the test site. Got a few other folks with us at FAR today. I think the team at Berkeley is doing their liquid engine. Someone's setting up a tower out there. This is something I've never done before. I've used thrust vector control on some of my rockets, but fin control is an entirely different beast, so I'm not expecting a perfect flight. This is 900 megahertz, this is a mic, this is the camera, this is the video downlink. Okay, next up on the list of things to do is test out the rocket. So I got the rocket here. Booting up. There's the fins. And we have signal. Okay, so here's the rocket. Here's the ground station. So far, everything else looks good. We've got like good gyros and good accelerometers, which is nice. We're in the nav converging state. We're probably gonna pick up more satellites, um, but we have seven as it stands. We also have the raw GPS data uh, coming down here that you can see on the screen. I ended up bringing up the serial terminal so you can see our lat lawn and everything. So I've got it on the roof of my car now. We're about to test the uh, ground station video feed here. So there's nothing on the screen there. And then I can go ahead and start the camera Cameras. Three, two, one, start cameras. We're still getting signal. This should show up. There we go. So that is a live view on the rocket. We don't have a great connection. We can also then take this and I can run a fin deflection test. So I'll run one now. Just take a quick look at the fins. Cool. Okay, so one of the steps that I need to take in order to stream out in the field is set up a big antenna. That is what this guy all the way up there is. The tower that we're connecting with should be way out there across the lake bed. There's all of this brush that basically makes it very difficult for us to get a connection over the horizon. But if we just elevate it like a little bit, I don't know if you can see it up there, but if we elevate it, we can get that connection much more easily. 47, 48. Gosh, almost 50. Looks like we're averaging like 14 or 15 megabytes per second up right now. So that's amazing. We have plenty of streaming capacity out here. And that does make sense to me because for Lumineer, we streamed in almost the same location. I actually had, if you see that bunker out there, that's where we streamed from for Lumineer. And so this is where we're going from for uh, Phineas. Hey buddy. There you go, right over the cable. May the gunch be with you. Okay, so we have Berkeley out there. They're out there doing their liquid engine. It's a biprop. I think it's LOX propane. Good luck to them. Right after they go, I think we'll try to get Phineas on the rail for its first flight. Woohoo! All right, wow. um, so. The Z plus axis, that says Z plus right there. This says Z plus right here. So we're gonna line those up when we actually put things together. And we've also got our data readout on the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and power on the vehicle. That's Z plus. A lot of squeaks. So igniter going in, you wanna get it all the way down in there. That's the, that's the stop. So that's where it's gonna be easiest for it to start. And then put this cap on and that's gonna help it hold pressure as it's coming up to thrust. This looks great. Um, how soon do you think you guys are going? Uh, whenever they do this one. Oh, okay. 
All right, we might grab uh, one of the low power boxes then to light ours. This is the super high tech way that we arm a rocket. It is reliable. It just looks really sketchy. And then this cover I made special for this. So it has an arrow right here. It actually slides right in there. We're armed. The cameras are great. What we're gonna do is put it in the ready to launch mode. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go back. So we're gonna put it in the ready to launch mode and then we'll fly and like cross our fingers real good, you know? We're still on. 16 sats, that's plenty to launch. All right, so we still have a little time to go, but people are coming back to the bunker. everyone chill <laughs> I mean all right well we're still the vehicle's still chilling all right camera state on camera status it's one you ready ready okay, Joe, you ready ready One count ready okay mark five four good luck Phineas three two one. Oh! Are we gonna get shoots? Well, I'll tell you what, man, we recovered, or we're gonna recover. <laughs> That was pretty cool. That was pretty neat. I don't think it totally worked, but it was pretty neat. So, it didn't work great. It wasn't amazing. The good news is it didn't go far. We should also keep our eyes peeled for a fin. If I had to bet, we've lost a fin somewhere because that looked pretty squirrely near the end. It looked like it was bending back and forth. Well, here's Phineas. Actually, hold up. That looks like four fins, dude. Okay, you can see a couple of things here. So see this, see this mark? The fin definitely like plowed into it a little bit. That's a loose connection on the fin. So we had, um, oh wow, these are like all loose. This is the only one Okay, so I think our, so there's a there's an arm that connects the shaft to the servo rod. I have worked very hard to try and get this to work with an epoxy bond, and it looks like three out of the four bonds slipped. So what ends up happening is the fins, although they are, um, the actuation point is forward of the center of pressure, which means that when they fail, they will fail straight. What actually happens is that like when you have an AOA, the fin will match that AOA. So it's not providing any of that restoring force that actually makes your rocket stable with static fins. So it'll behave as if it doesn't really have fins up until a point. Holy shit, like we got it back and the fins are still attached. Shouts out to my boy, Parker Waugh, the OG intern of BPS.space. Thank you for your shoot. Your shoot provided the descent that we needed for Phineas to get back to the ground um, in a way that it, it was sadly unable to do for BBR. May it rest in peace. I can't believe it. I thought this went way worse. I was expecting to find a bunch of pieces. So it was an internal mechanical like epoxy bond failure. All right, well, good flight. And now we can review the data.
All right, now it is time to do the failure analysis and review some data. And if you're not dressing up for your failure analysis, I don't know what to tell you. We'll start by looking at the tracking footage of the rocket. Right at liftoff, we can already see the roll control system trying to do its work. The vehicle oscillates back and forth a few times before flipping out of control. You'll also see the fins move on the onboard footage from the flight. As we roll back and forth, the fins deflect to try and counteract that roll, but we can tell that something is wrong almost right away because the fins are not moving equally. As mentioned before, this flight was just about roll control, not pitch or yaw. To control the roll, each of the four fins needs to move equally, and we can tell in the onboard footage that's not happening. At the beginning of the flight, when everything's working, we see these fins match each other, but quickly after launch, the fins stop matching each other because the mechanical joints on the fins begin to slip. So if the force of the air on the rocket can destroy the joint between the fin and the servo that moves it, the question is like, how did I not catch this before the flight? And the answer, I think, is heat. Phineas idled on the launch pad with the computer booted up, ready to go for about an hour before it flew. This was in the hot desert sun, and it seems like the inside of the rocket got pretty hot pretty quick. As you saw, when we found the rocket on the ground, those fins were able to rotate freely around their shaft, all except for one. But once we brought the rocket back into the shade later that day, the joint solidified again, and the fin was able to drop drive the servo it was attached to. This tells us that the heat probably degraded the joint between the servo and the fin, and then the lack of heat solidified that connection again. So the question is like, what's melting? The servos or actuators had plastic horns on them, plastic basically drive mechanisms. They also may have had some plastic gears inside, and there are a few other assorted plastic parts in the fin mount. So there are several parts we need to look at which have the possibility of melting or bending in heat and going forward forward, what we'll do is replace more and more of this design with metal parts or very high temperature plastics. Unfortunately, because of how short the controlled portion of flight was, we don't have a lot of good data telling us if the roll control system actually worked. We can't tell how well the fins were attached at the time of launch, and although we can assume that they weren't very well attached because of how fast it failed, it does look like we sort of tried to control the roll axis before things got out of control. I'll say it again, I have never done fin control before, and in all likelihood, we're probably gonna have a few more rough flights before this type of thing actually works. It took me a long time at the beginning of BPS to figure out how to do thrust vector control, and the same is probably gonna be true for the fins. I'm hoping to fly Phineas again before the end of the year with an updated fin mechanism, and until then, the best way that you can support this project is by taking a look at today's sponsor. Just give me a second here, hold on. Today's video is sponsored by BPS Internships. One of the best experiences you could ever have is interning for a person who last week ate fried rice five times from the same restaurant. But don't take it from me, in the words of one of our previous interns. Here we go! <laughs> Wait, uh, proposal. Oh, I hate interning at this company. <laughs> but Joe, how do I become a BPS intern? I just don't know where to start. Well, it's simple. You just click the link in the description down below and pick up your official BPS intern attire. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I can't wait to be an intern at this amazing... <laughs> This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. But hurry, the ability to purchase a BPS Space internship closes on December 15th, so you have until then to become a prestigious intern at this very real business. Thank you so much to bps.space for supporting this video, and thank you to you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.